What is up, YouTube? This is PCC Essien here, and guess what? Today, Wednesday, May 7th, 2015, I am done with my sophomore year of college. Yep, I am done. Summer is here, so you will be seeing a few more videos of mine. I will be doing an update video uh, in the very near future, uh, so stay tuned for that. I've got a few things I'd like to go ahead and mention in that. Now, as I'm sure most of you have noticed by now, this is a very unusual video. <laughs> I've never actually done a video about this, so we'll see what happens. This semester, I actually took a Ceramics 1 class in which we learned how to do various different things with clay. And in this video, I'm going to be showing off the things that I created in that class because I really want to. I really want to show them off and I just want to talk about them. All right, I had a blast in that class. It was such a fun class. Very stressful. Now what you're looking at right now is clay. All right, this is some of the clay that we used. This is the type of clay that we used. Uh, this isn't actually malleable anymore. This has been in my room actually for quite a while. I actually, this was not from the semester. This is actually from a class I took last semester called Art Appreciation. In that class, we actually did have a clay assignment. But here it is. This is what it is. It's a uh, cone 04 red clay. All right, now the cone 04 stands for the temperature, and I can't actually remember exactly how hot uh, the temperature is, but cone 04 is uh, several thousand degrees, basically, in order to get it to set up. You can't make something with this clay and then put it in the oven and then, you know, get it, expect it to set up properly. It's just not going to happen. Your oven doesn't get anywhere near as hot. We're talking thousands of degrees. But anyway, here it is. This is some, uh, this is actually in bone dry state, so it's actually flaky. I'm going to break some off. It is pretty durable. You would think that bone dry clay would be pretty fragile. And it is kind of fragile, but here's some of it. It kind of, in this state, it kind of powderizes. All right. So I'm just going to, you, know, you can kind of take it, and break it up. And uh, it's very kind of soft and powdery, but it does hold to, it does hold its form very, very nicely. All right. Uh, beforehand, it was actually a darker red color, or actually it was more of a darker brown color when it was actually had moisture in it. When you make something with clay, the first thing that you want to do is you want to let it set up like this. When it's in this state, the bone dry state, that is when it is ready to be bisque fired. And this is something that I made last year as well. I made this in the art appreciation class. This is a uh, sort of a research project we had to do. We had to research kind of a clay uh, figurine and try and recreate it. So here's mine. It, it's okay. I'm not particularly proud of it, but this is what bisqued clay looks like. Uh, the, uh, these black spots here weren't there before. I was actually doing a little bit of an experiment with a torch to see how it would react to it. That's why it's, uh, it's black back there, but the camera isn't really doing this justice. It's not really a bright orange color, but it's very orange. Okay. Um, it's kind of an ugly color. Personally, I don't really like it, but when you heat up bone dry clay to the several thousands of degrees, uh, the chemistry of the clay changes completely. And this is now kind of, you know, you can't really hear it here, but you know, if I flick it, it kind of pings. Uh, this is, it's kind of glass like almost now. Um, it, basically it's ceramic. You can actually use this to sharpen a knife now. So anyways, that is enough of that. Let's go ahead and let's jump into the things that I made this semester. Starting off with the very first thing I made this semester. Whoosh! Here he is. This is sort of similar to that uh, totem assignment I just showed you. We had to make something that we thought would uh, resemble us in a way. Now, obviously, this doesn't resemble me. I was really uninspired that day. I didn't really know what to do, so I just kind of made something up. And uh, this is what I came up with. And uh, I name it. I named it Biscuit. And the reason why is because this practically this whole semester has actually been just bisqued. Okay. In fact, last week I finally got around to glazing it. All right. That's why it has color to it. All right. So all the coloration that you see on here is actually glaze. Okay. Which is weird. You, you typically, when I thought of glaze, I thought of it as being like shiny. All right. You can see his eyes are very shiny. Well, you can kind of, yeah, you can kind of see how they're very, very very shiny but you know you can also create interesting textures with clays this is actually something called green velvet crust but on top of that i put an amber colored coating which is essentially it looks like tree sap and it creates this weird kind of scale scaly effect it it, it, it kind of worked here it looks a lot like warts so I really think that looks, it just looks awesome okay and uh yesterday i actually took a picture of this and the picture was kind of amazing. It actually looked like it was in its natural habitat. Um, so 
there it is. You will be seeing a bunch of uh, pictures flow through this video, by the way, as I'm sure you have already noticed. But yeah, I'm not really sure what it is. A few people before I had it colored thought it was a pig. Can't really tell how it was a pig. Um, maybe like this, but I don't see a snout. I don't know. But yeah, these are kind of loops. You can kind of see through those. And uh, yeah, there he is. That was my first ever clay creation of the semester. Now, we're going to be moving into project number one, the first project of the semester, in which we had to learn how to make basic shapes, okay? Uh, we had to make a cube, we had to make a sphere, and we had to make a cylinder, okay? Here's my cube, here's my sphere, and here, this is why the camera's so high, Ugh, is the cylinder. Yeah, the cylinder is incredibly massive. This could actually be used as a trash can. Uh, but we'll move on to that a little bit later. Let's actually move it out of the way for the time being. And let me show you in uh, the, um, let me show you these. All right, so here's the cube. Uh, this is the first thing that I actually started making in the project one. Basically, what we did was we took the clay, we rolled it out into slabs, and then we cut the slabs into six squares, in which we then cut 90 degree angles into the edges and then we had to score out the uh, edges and put them together like this. The scoring kind of creates a Velcro effect, so it helps hold it together better. And uh, we reinforced it with clay snakes, uh, obviously, until we uh, put the last face on. So Now, one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you're working with clay, uh, especially if you're going to be making a hollow, all right, this is hollow, a hollow form uh, like this cube, is that you need to have ventilation holes, okay? Everywhere you see solid you know, where the, uh, there's kind of a loop here, that's actually a hole. And they, it kind of got filled in with glaze. You can't really see it anymore. But those are actually vent holes because when you put it in the bisque, it gets so astronomically hot, like I say, that the air inside needs somewhere to go because it's expanding. If it has nowhere to go, guess what's going to happen to your piece? It's going to explode, literally. Okay? And in some cases, it'll explode after it's kind of started to get to the... Uh, to the ceramic state, uh, it will then explode, and that is very bad. It, sharp shards of ceramic flying all throughout the kiln and hitting other pieces. Definitely do not want that to happen. But I really like this one. This one is actually probably one of my favorites. Unfortunately, on the top, we did get some uh, some glaze crawling. That's what this is. It kind of messed up here. It kind of crawled a little bit. But basically what I did was I... Uh, the colors under here that you see, and this holds true for all of these pieces with the exception of this one, uh, and a little bit, the uh, cylinder is a little different. These colors that you see were all done with slip, and what slip is, it's basically like a liquid clay that's been colored, and I use it to paint, and uh, then I dump, dunk this into a clear glaze. After I actually put some uh, of what's called Katrina's Excellent Black in these black parts, I did paint it with black slip in here, but I wanted to do some Katrina's Black in, uh, glaze on it just to give it maybe help bring it out more. Here's the bottom of it. Uh, that's my name. I had We had to put our names on these pieces. Well, we didn't actually have to put our names on these pieces, but I thought we did. So I put my name on this one. And uh, I don't mind showing that to you guys anymore because my, my name's on my Instagram anyway. So, But that's my name. And you can better see that that's a vent hole. All right. I just didn't like the signature side. I wanted this to be hidden. Uh, just so it's kind of non you know, sort of non-discreet when you're looking at it. Um, and yeah, I like this. It kind of reminds me of a wood. Uh, like wood like texture it looks like a, a tree almost so very very cool I like that a lot all right now here we've got the sphere this thing weighs quite a bit this is kind of dense basically what we did to make the spheres is we took two pinch pots which are basically you, you do it with play-doh sometimes when you're a kid you make a bowl by pinching the, the play-doh like put your thumb on it and then pinch it around and make a bowl out of it that's what we did with these we had to make two of them and then we scored the edges and smashed them together and formed it into a sphere. And uh, there's that. And I actually made a base for it so that way it could stand up like that. And it's at an angle because I, uh, I noticed when it was straight up and down, I didn't really like the way it looked. So I wanted to go ahead and put it uh, at an angle. And it definitely helps add to the interest. I like this one a lot. Uh, I'm not really sure what this one resembles. Now, let me go ahead and move these out of the way. And I'm going to show you my behemoth cylinder this is the biggest thing that i have made all right for some reason we had to make it this big <laughs> um i really don't know why wow this thing's big here it is it's basically like the size of a small trash can 
Um, you can see a similar effect here, although I actually made it a little bit simplified just due to time constraints, but I'm really glad I did. If I went for the same kind of detail that I had with this, like, you know, this small, that was my original plan, holy moly, that would have taken ages to paint. So this looks really good. And uh, also, I, I think it actually works with it very well. Fun little fact, the every, everywhere where you see, like, this brown color, that is raw unslipped clay all right that's the color of of that's the natural color of the clay after it's been glazed now the reason why i say this one's a little bit different than the cube in the sphere due to time constraints this is the piece this is the last piece i actually got finished uh i decided before i bisked it to not go ahead and use black slip in between here all right so there's no black slip in between here instead what i did was i went ahead and i just painted in the black with the the katrina's glaze and uh, you can see kind of you can kind of see uh, in some parts where I did that, like right here. Because of that, it's kind of broken in some places. But from far away, you you know, you'd, or from like a quick glance, you can't really tell. Uh, so it looks absolutely great in my opinion. I happen to be a huge fan of this. There's the bottom. Uh, I like to have a white bottom on my favorite pieces. The, uh, sp the sphere also has a white bottom. And you can see that hole there was uh, an alignment thing. But yeah, there's a... <laughs> there's a... Um, a white bottom on it. I just like the way that white bottoms look. I hate the color of the raw clay when it's not been glazed. Now the inside here is a little bit interesting. All right, so uh, on the inside, um, this is actually not Katrina's black glaze. If I go ahead and turn this flashlight on, you will see that this is actually a blue, sh it's a blue shiny glaze. And it looks really cool. You don't really see it in normal indoor lighting like this. You can't really tell that that's blue. But uh, when you have like a, a light hitting it or going directly into it, you can tell that that's blue. Um, I actually did an experiment though. If you go ahead, I actually tried doing sort of a blue uh, and black splatter pattern, but it didn't really show up. You, you'll see, here's a picture of uh, the, cl the glaze before it was actually bisque. And yes, the, uh, the blue glaze is, it's not really blue when it's on fire. The, uh, the stuff that almost looks kind of beige in color is actually the blue glaze and then this obviously the black stuff is well the black glaze but it didn't really come out um you can kind of see a little bit of uh has resided down here in the bottom let's see if i can uh man <laughs> this thing is so heavy and i would hate to drop it all right you can kind of see a little bit in the bottom there kind of um there's also a little bit of a crawling there where some of the glaze actually came away from the surface at the bottom where you can see exposed clay but yeah, that's what I did. Uh, interesting thing about this. When uh, it was fired, the kiln malfunctioned. You'll see that we got this sort of weird coloration down here at the bottom, kind of a ring of uh, lighter color. The kiln malfunctioned at the bottom sort of element, the bottom heating element stopped working. It's like, I think the fuse must have, must have tripped a fuse or something. Um, so the glaze didn't really, well, glaze right if you will uh it actually I, I don't mind it at all it's on the inside first of all and you can't really tell you know again at a quick glance and the outside of it wasn't really affected if the outside was affected uh i probably would have opted to refire this she did offer to refire the pieces that were in that kiln but because the outside actually wasn't really affected by it i didn't mind it at all I didn't even notice it until she mentioned it. I was like, oh yeah, look at that. Um, so I'm actually really quite happy with it. Now something I forgot to show you real quickly, a little weird uh, mystery with my sphere. Check this out. Uh, the inside of my sphere. When I cut this hole into it, I cut this hole into it uh, a few weeks after making the actual sphere form itself. I noticed that we have this weird kind of pad, this weird sort of texture in there. Almost looks like a cave. I just thought, I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> So anyway, that's random. All right, so that is it for the skills project. These are easily my favorite things that I've made this semester. Hands down, period. Well, I don't know. Yeah, they're some of my favorite things I made this semester. I love the way that they look. I like how they all match. Uh, I don't want to hit the, the cylinder. I like how they all kind of have the same general theme here with the colors. And I'm a really big fan of it. Only complaint is that I forgot to put yellow slip on the uh, on the spear but whatever all right let's go ahead and let's move on to the next thing all right so we finally got done with the skills project which took longer than expected because we had an insane snow event this semester we had like snows every other day and because of that 
we actually missed ceramics for two consecutive weeks, okay? Now, a class like ceramics is not a class that you want to miss two consecutive weeks in at all. That's really, really bad because of the kind of class it is. You really want to make sure you have as much time as possible. So because of that, when we finally started getting back into our regular schedule, things started to get a little hectic, all right? Things started to really pick up and collide with each other, and projects were kind of overlapping. Now, there's actually not much left uh, in the showcase, believe it or not, but these projects do take time, and it was really kind of stressful. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to project the second. Now, this one, we had to do something that is related to shelter, something that we find comfort in when we use it. Now, it can't be something simple like a house or a building, okay? We had to make something like, you could tell it's a shelter, you can tell that it kind of shelters something or someone, but in kind of an abstract way, if you will. I thought about it long and hard, and I eventually decided upon doing something related to technology, all right? And this is what I came up with. There will be some explaining. Now, before we actually went ahead and started, doing our uh, shelter project we needed to make a scale model to give the teacher an idea of what it was that we wanted to do and i wanted to keep my scale model mostly because i knew i was going to be doing this video and wanted to show it to you guys here is my scale model all right now you can see already we have some major major glazing issues but that doesn't matter this wasn't actually like a graded thing uh, i just chose i wanted to keep this because i, I really liked how small it is um so here it is. This is the scale model. You can see it. It's actually hollow on the bottom. It looks like a power plug. Chong. <laughs> plug something into that. Um, this is a, a fireplace. All right. Can you see that? It, it looks like a house. I know it looks just like a house, but it, trust me, it's a fireplace. Um, see, here's like a little spot where you can put in something, you know, to cook it. Like if, it, if you, I, I kind of made this up in my head. So it, I've seen fireplaces that kind of have a thing there that you can stick like a pizza in or something and cook it, but I don't know. Uh, it it kind of works. Now you can see here's the uh, the backside. It's kind of plain on this one. And uh, the chimney is actually a chimney. If I go and take the flashlight here and I shine this, you can see that the chimney is hollow. You can see through the chimney, which is very cool. And yeah, now I'm going to show you a shot of, uh, of the creation of this. To build this, I decided to use the a slab building method where I took uh, slabs of clay, cut them out into the prop appropriate shapes, and then stuck it directly to this base. Just kind of cut it up, scored the edges, or scored the faces, and stuck them together. And there's one shot in particular where things looked incredibly complicated, which I'll be showing you right now. This is, a this is actually why I wanted to keep this. Just because of the fact that I paid attention to every single structural detail in this that I did with a big one. So let's go ahead and let's set this one aside here. And let me actually show you the big one. Ready? Here it is. This thing is a beast. Like seriously, this is heavy. It's a fireplace as you can see. Now this one obviously has a lot more detail added to it. You'll see that uh, it's made out of bricks. Um, as you can see, oh, you just cut part of the back. And uh, there's the sides and the back has a power button on it. Like I say, I wanted this to be technology themed. And uh, there's the other side. And here's this. Now the reason why this is technology themed, the uh, this is again, like I say, a, a fireplace. Fire is kind of, with the exception of the knife, okay? Because the knife, I think technically is the first technology that human beings had. But when we discovered fire, the amount of things that opened up to us in terms of like things that we could do with materials just completely exploded with what we could do. Fire is such a necessary tool for today. We use it to create various things. For instance, we need it. Well, we didn't really fire these with actual fire, uh, but you know, but potters use most potters in some cases use you know wood kilns to make their uh, to fire up their pots and you know get them to the state. Uh, we actually just used an electric one, so we kind of cheated a little bit. But yeah, you do need fire for a lot of stuff. That's kind of the thing I was going with here. Fire is kind of a necessary thing. And a fireplace is used to shelter fire from the outside elements. And it also shelters us from it. So, like, we're protected from the fire, but the fire is also protected from, say, the wind or the rain or what, whatever have you. It's, uh, no matter what hits it, it's still going to be burning. Now, I don't really know if you've caught a glimpse of this yet, but we do have in here a slit 
You see that? What is that for? As I set this down and nearly throw my back out, I felt I felt something weird going on there. Well, that slit is for. Whoosh, yep. Remember when I made a, my video on the power button Zippo? How I said I was buying this for an art project. This is the art project. Check this out. You can see it has a power button on it. All right. In fact, this has a power button on it. So they look very similar. Well, completely different actually. But what you do is you're going to take your Zippo and you're going to put it in the slot. Just like that. And it will hold it. Nope. It'll also fall over if you're not careful. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it fell. But yeah, it's, uh, it's designed to hold a Zippo. And uh, there's also enough clearance in here to where I can actually take the Zippo. Now this is a little bit weird. The uh, sort of the opening here, I didn't really account for this that well uh, functionally, but you can have it in here open. All right. The problem is it's very hard to get it in there. And then when you do get it in there, you have next to no room to get a spark going. There we go. And then you can actually light it. So yeah. That is what this is for. My Zippo, this Zippo actually now lives inside of here. It just sits there and uh, looks pretty on my, in my room. The glaze on here, uh, wax resisted in between these white bits. These white bits are colored, whoops. Uh, these white bits were colored in with white slip and uh, did some wax resisting on there to get the, keep the glaze from sticking to this and I put clear on it. Now the clear really helps because remember the color of this clay when it's not glazed yeah that looks more like brick color than that so while it's not exactly realistic you don't normally have shiny bricks in person I think it helps aesthetically because if it wasn't like that uh, it would look ridiculous <laughs> trust me I poke some holes in it with my needle tool and actually if you feel it, if you rub your finger on it it feels like brick okay it feels just like brick um, it's really kind of weird. <laughs> I like it though. Uh, there's just some rocks on here for decoration. You can see that I was a little bit, again, high stress levels. We really did not have enough time to work on this project. Um, so some of the slip kind of got onto the fireplace itself. Oh well. And unfortunately we got a crack. This is one of my, this is my first piece actually that got cracked. I did not get any cracks in my first project. I was one of the lucky few. But you can see there's a nice crack there, a nice stress crack. There's also a few cracks inside of there kind of see also when I made the power button I wanted to give it kind of a kind of a uh, a marble look so what I do is I took two colors of slip in fact that's white and black and I mixed them but I didn't mix them all the way and then when I painted it it kind of left behind this texture it kind of works it's not exactly convincing but it's it works this is also one of my favorite pieces. Um, in fact, this may be my favorite piece. I don't really know what my favorite piece is that I made, guys. So, mm, yeah, that was a 12-minute segment on one project. I do believe I've mentioned everything. The uh, the glazing right here, by the way, this is green. This is actually, if you remember in the beginning of the video, if you still remember that because it was kind of a while ago, uh, this is what green velvet crust actually looks like. I use green velvet crust there, and it looks awesome. Very nice dark, nice contrast. Kind of has a football field uh, color pa color palette to it, actually. If the rocks weren't there, even. So that's kind of nice. Okay, that's enough of that. I'll, I'll just leave this in the back here. Uh, these net, We're almost done with this video, trust me. I'm going to fly through the rest of these things. Uh, the next thing we did, we actually had to do a research assignment uh, in which we did a we did some research on a, on a ceramicist and we then had to not only write a paper about them, we also had to make something that mimicked what they did. Now for me, I chose somebody named Richard Notkin. He's very much into political art, making political statements with his art and stuff uh, like that. And uh, I looked at him looked at his work very briefly on the bus ride to school and it was also in the early in the morning and I saw that his stuff was very industrial it looked very industrial all right I saw mostly like his mechanical looking stuff so I was like you know what this guy makes things that are mechanical I need to think of something that's gonna look mechanical because I really like what this guy what this guy does and eventually I decided to make these 
<clears throat> yep, I actually made several <laughs> um, pieces. <clears throat> Our uh, size for this, by the way, we needed to get a little bit smaller than our cube. Now I figured if I made multiple, I can get it to be a little smaller than our cube. Now it is quite smaller than our than the cube, but it did work. Um, I got a 95 on this assignment, I think. So yay, uh, here we go. These are called cogsters, all right? Take the word cog, mix it with coasters, and you get cogsters. So here's this one, um, as you can see it, there's that. It's not really based on any specific gears, but they are like I, I made them. Like I made these up as I went, essentially. And I also made all of these. At least I, I didn't like paint them, but I I actually cut all of them out uh, in a, the total time of an hour. Okay, uh, I cut all these out, and then I think uh, after I actually then had to go to class in between, so I let these kind of set up, and then I went in and sort of finished them up to the best of my ability. Uh, and I think I spent a total time of about an hour on these. All right, now these have been bisked. I mean, you can hear if I take them. You know, they sound kind of like metal almost when they hit. You'll note that they are kind of weirdly colored though. They're actually almost look like gold. Unfortunately, I didn't really pay, I didn't really, uh, I kind of misunderstood the course calendar. And I thought that we were gonna be glazing these the week after we actually were supposed to glaze them, like the week after they were due. So I actually took these home because I wanted to do some sanding work on them. <clears throat> and then I didn't bring them back the day we were supposed to glaze them. Yeah. Because, well, I thought we were glazing them the next week. Because we had so much we were doing with uh, with this guy. Like, there is a lot, we all had a lot left to do with that, that I was like, there's no way we're going to have time to glaze these. Well, it turns out we had to glaze them that day anyway. Oh well. So what I did was I went to Walmart, bought some spray paint, some gold spray paint, and spray painted them. And I have to say, I think I like this better now that it's uh looks like almost metallic <clears throat> than I would have if it wasn't uh, if I had glazed it. It's just a little fun fact. I can tell my voice is going away. This is a long video. My voice never goes away. Wow. All right. <clears throat> so, yep, there they are. Six of these. Like I say, the guy who I researched, Richard Notkin, he made things that are kind of industrial looking. So I was thinking I need to make something industrial looking, and I decided to make coasters. Although it turns out he actually makes a lot of human heart things. He likes the human heart. Uh, he's very into his political statements. If you want to look him up, he's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> I definitely recommend that you guys check him out if you uh, want to see a, kind of a different approach on the art of ceramics. It's very cool. <clears throat> okay, that's all for Project 3. All right, before we go ahead and get to Project 4, I want to go ahead and show you the one and only personal project that I had time for. Unfortunately, we don't really have, we did not really have that much time for, for us to go in and kind of make things for ourselves that we wanted. Uh, the only thing that I had time for was this coaster. Yep. Yeah, I made a single coaster. Ta-da, there it is. Uh, it is a very beautiful coaster. This is probably one of the prettiest things I made. Basically what it is, I um, made a slab, <clears throat> cut it out. It's kind of organic looking. I didn't really do a perfect cut. Now what this is originally going to be for, this is originally going to be a launch pad for this. This is a Cheerson CX-10 quadcopter. All right, I wanted to make like a, a launch pad that was kind of themed on it. I wanted to kind of give it similar colors. But as I was cutting the, uh, the design into it, I messed up. And I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to make it into a beautiful coaster. <clears throat> so that's what I did. As you can see, uh, it, it was supposed to kind of be like, a, you know, kind of have a similar color scheme to this. And it was going to look like a, a launch pad, but I kind of screwed it up. Uh, it could still work as a launch pad. In fact, I used, when, I, when this thing worked, I used uh, coasters as launch pads all the time. But uh, yeah, this could still work. It's got a centrifugal, uh, got a sort of a center symmetrical design to it so <laughs> yeah there you go um that's it basically all i did is i just took various glazes and painted over white slip all right so this is white slip and then and then basically the bottom here is white slip and i just took various glaze colors and just put them on as i was using them actually for what i'm about to show you as i was glazing these next things i'm going to show you uh, i would take the glazes and i put them on this so i actually made this last i made this towards the beginning 
it's sort of the middle of the semester. I actually created it in the middle of the semester, but I actually glazed it last week. So there you go.